She's betting the fallout she'll get from a lame duck president is less than that she'd get from angering organized labor and her party's two presidential contenders. Britt? Thanks, Wendell. So what exactly does the U.S. trade with Colombia do? Who benefits? And why do Democrats oppose a free trade agreement right now? Chief Washington correspondent Jim Angle examines the issue. In the early 1990s, the U.S. gave trade preferences to the drug-producing nations of South America, such as Colombia, in an attempt to build the economy in order to undermine drug trafficking. You've been able to take groups from the illegitimate economy, narco-trafficking, planting coca, and move them into the legitimate economy. President Bill Clinton maintained those preferences throughout his term in office, as has President Bush. As a result, virtually all of Colombia's exports, such as bananas, coffee, and cut flowers, among other things, enter the U.S. duty-free. The agreement now in question would drop tariffs on U.S. products exported to Colombia, many of them expensive manufactured products. When Caterpillar ships a large piece of equipment down there, Caterpillar is paying $200,000 in tariffs, which is taxes, effectively, that would disappear the day this agreement went into force. The U.S. also ships cars and car parts, Whirlpool refrigerators made in Arkansas, laptops made in San Diego, even televisions made in Pennsylvania, as well as American beef and agricultural products. Colombia has tariffs of 35%. Uh, on industrial goods, 80 plus percent on agricultural commodities, and they have agreed to eliminate all of those tariffs. So it can only help in terms of increasing U.S. exports. And she argues U.S. jobs. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has repeatedly argued that American jobs would be hurt by the agreement, as she did again today, in saying she will not bring the agreement to a vote. This has to be done in recognition not only of the concerns that we have about uh, human rights violations of workers in Colombia. Uh, but based on the economic security of America's workers. The U.S. labor movement also opposes the agreement, but not over jobs. They see little impact either way. Labor's concern comes down to one issue, violence our, against our Colombian States trade unionists. The United States should not be signing trade deals with countries uh, that can't protect the security and safety of labor activists uh, who want to form unions and bargain collectively to improve their own standard of living. Amidst widespread violence in Colombia, trade unionists have suffered with almost 200 killed in 2001, for instance. But as a result of efforts by the current government, those killings have fallen by some 80 percent to 39 killings in 2007. A big change, but not enough, says the AFL-CIO. Well, actually, violence is unfortunately increasing again. This year, uh, 19 uh, labor activists have been murdered since January 1st. That's an increase of over 70 percent this year. Colombia isn't the only battle pending. There are also agreements with Panama and South Korea, three markets with some 135 million consumers. But an election year standing in the way. In Washington, Jim Angle, Fox News. President Bush has ordered the secretary.